I'll meet people and talk to them, and they'll say, oh, you don't look like a lesbian. I'm like, what does a lesbian look like to you? You know, <laughs> within the last past year, I learned a new word, gender nonconforming. I said, I'm taking that one, gender you nonconforming. You were way ahead of your time. Yeah, I've been told that, you know, but it's like, I said, well, okay, if I'm ahead of my time, then get ready, because it's coming. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about how you're feeling right now? Um, well, I'm feeling very excited. I, I go back to like when all of this started, 1969, you know, we're doing an uprising. What uprising? Who knew? What uprising? Um, the uprising Stonewall. I'm a Stonewall veteran. My involvement had been in the civil rights movement, women's movement, right, Black Panther Party. I was like, wait a minute, this sounds like something I need to be involved in. To me, it was like coming home. Who knew, you know, that actually was the beginning of the gay rights movement. Take the mask off, completely off. And can you put it on the stool? Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hello, nice to hi. see your face. Hi. <laughs> can you talk a little bit about what you think your style says about you? The way you dress, what does it say about you? It says, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. I always said, people had the problem, I don't have the problem. People have the problem with me, I don't have a problem with you, <laughs> you know, because I know who I am. I don't allow anybody to dictate, you know, who I am, what I am, how I dress. Oh. I was initiated into African Goddess Society. I was presented with this, um, uh, this piece because I was now Reverend Goddess Kennedy. These glasses I got for my 82nd birthday, but they're butterflies because my mother said that when I was born in September, it was very unusual to see butterflies. And she said she remembers seeing a butterfly before she gave birth to me. So, well, butterflies, my totem. So can you talk about some, um, what are the reactions that people make to you based on your, how you look? I'll meet people and talk to them and they'll say, oh, you don't look like a lesbian. I'm like, what does a lesbian look like to you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so what do you think they think a lesbian looks like? Well, a lot of, yeah, a lot of the women were into what was called role playing. You were either butch or you were femme. And then here comes along somebody like me that's not into the whole role playing thing but they've gone by what, you know, they've been told and what they heard and all these kind of things. Within the last past year, I learned a new word, gender non-conforming. I said, I'm taking that one. Because <laughs> that kind of fits like what it's been like over the years. Can so. you take off your glasses? We want to see your beautiful face. <laughs> oh, yeah. So can you yeah. talk about how old you were when you first knew yeah, that okay. you were gay? I would say about eight or nine. Eight know. or nine years old? Yeah. I was 10 years old. I had this crush on this Carol, she had red hair. And I thought that was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. That afternoon, after we got out of school, we came back and we were uh, sitting on the back porch and I reached over and kissed her on the cheek. And so she turned around and she kissed me back on the cheek. I was so happy. So we got up and we did like a little dance. Her sister came and saw us doing this dance. She snatched, her name was Geraldine, I'll never forget it. She snatched Geraldine, took her back to where they lived and the next day, when we went to school, Geraldine wasn't there. The whole family packed up and moved. They were gone. Two days, they were gone out of, they oh left Saratoga. The story was now going around town. My mother was like, she was mortified. And so she's saying, well, gee, you're gonna get married. And so we're gonna cure you of this. And I'm like, the what? There's nothing wrong with me. If you were gay, you were threatened with Utica. Utica, upstate, you know, it was a mental institution. I had this certificate that raised my age to 18, because back in those days, 18 was legal age. And I went to the Albany Recruiting Center and um, took a test for the Air Force and passed it. So I really thought I was getting away. I said, hot dog, they shipped us that day to Waco, Texas. I was in the Air Force 14 days. You <laughs> was my mother had a private detective and they found me. We were on the plane going back to Albany Airport, and on the plane she's telling me, you will get married in June. They were getting ready to put this minister out because he was not married. So I struck a deal, I thought, with him, and I said, look, you know, you need a wife, you know, in order to keep your little church. You know, and I said, we can get married and you can keep the church. 
Okay. So I called my mother on the phone and was like, Mama, I'm in love. I'm ready to get married in June. I found a minister and I'm in this church. She said, you found a minister? I said, yes, and I'm in love. Oh, she was thrilled. And Three. you were 14. Mm -hmm. And I got married. And you wow. knew you were lying to her. You, were, you knew it was like a game, a manipulation to get. Yeah. Did to the get, guy know? Uh, no. Did the minister know? He didn't know then. He found out later. Because like we never had. You um, never had sex. Um, yeah, the marriage was consummated, yes. The piano player in the church. She was a doll, and I was like really attracted to her. And so when I told him about the girl, he slapped me. He had a Bible in his hand and a knife in his hand. He was trying to cut my face. I knocked him over the couch, ran out of the apartment screaming, and I ran into the laundry mat. I didn't know where else to go. And by this time, these people, these apartment buildings, like they called the police. And I'll never forget, there was this older sergeant, you know, and he looked at me, and I'm looking at him, he said, how old are you? And I'm like this, I'm, like, I'm 14, you know, and there was blood, you know. He said, 14, <laughs> where did you come from? And the marriage was annulled. So, you know. That so you never saw him again? Nope. <laughs> nope. Wow. You, had, you were having relationships or um, intimate relationships with women, but you ended up getting married again. My second husband, Eugene, he said like, they're, they're putting me through a lot of uh, rigmarole in the army. And I said, why? He said, I got a friend. And I said, a guy friend? He said, yeah. I said, ooh. I said, tell you what, again, <laughs> let's get married. They won't put you out to service after that. We got married, sure enough. And did you have kids with him? Uh, huh? Yes. Yes, yes. Because, I mean, I liked him, you know, and he liked me. Because we were like, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better, two birds of a feather. You know, I mean, he had his life, I had mine, but yet still, for the sake of people, we, you know, we were husband and wife. When I got pregnant with his child, he says to me, well, I guess that's, we're, gonna, we're not going to be gay any longer. I'm like, what? <laughs> and he was like adamant. And I'm like, oh Lord. I said, I told myself, oh, I don't step into it again. You know, and I said, no, <laughs> no, Eugene, this, this is not gonna work. After that, the only thing I knew how to do really was sing, because I sang in the choir. Couldn't get any bookings in the United States, again, color. There was like so much segregation I didn't even know anything about. I got an agent. He said, look, we're gonna get you bookings out of the country. And I worked like six months after a year, you know. Whereas over here, I'd be lucky if I could get one night. Bracelets? Can you take your bracelets off? Um, um, I can take off three. Okay. Mm -hmm. What would you say has been your biggest struggle that you've worked on overcoming or have overcome? Internally. I guess. I kind of built this wall and I would not let anything penetrate that. I overcame a lot of anger and hostility. As they said in those days, the Negroes have to get off the sidewalk if a white person went by. They had these fountains, one black and one white. And I wasn't getting off the sidewalk for nobody. They'd look and say, oh yeah, there's one of the Yankee niggers. The girl that was with me, she walked me back. You know, they had these little shortcuts that they would take because you couldn't go through town. So we're going down the shortcut path and this car drives by and it was a sheriff. And he yells out, he stops the car and yells at her, come on here and suck my dick. I lost it. I told her, I said, you run. You know, and she looked at me, I said, run. When I went back there, I said, you want your dick sucked? And I snatched him out and took his baton and beat him with it. Now you talk about anger. Right. The time I got back to Boston, I was so mad. And then I'm thinking to myself, I got sons. You know, and the cops are like, <laughs> taking pot shots whenever they felt like it. People were still being lynched. A few days later, it comes that they assassinated Dr. Martin Luther King. I said, that's it, I'm through. I can't, you know, I'm not nonviolent. And with all of that that I had seen in the South and the fact that they assassinated Dr. Martin Luther King and he tried to have a nonviolent mo I was like, oh no. And that was, you know, that was it for me. And then my sons would join the Black Panther Party. Two Amazing. sons we were in the Black Panthers. We were original Amazing. Black Panthers. Wow. Um, so, what strikes me about you? 
is that you have so much joy. Yes. I've always said that laughter is good medicine because with all the things that are going on, uh, you have to find somewhere in that to be joyful. The struggle continues. You can't give up. Won't give up, won't give out. You know who you are. Love yourself, live your truth, and laugh in the face of adversity. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Now the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Stonewall 25, I got presented with this crown and a flag that said Stonewall 25. And they gave it to me for having uh, been a gay rights pioneer. And you don't take this off any of this? Oh, you know, um, the whole thing about that is, like I was wondering about that. Do you want to keep it on? Yeah, yeah. And why can't the shoes come off? Huh? The shoes can't come off even if it's for a few minutes? No, that's a, no. Okay. No, that was like, you know, like part of the initiation, you know. Uh, like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's not touching the floor. Yeah. Oh, okay. When was the last time you cried? Last week. Talking about how much it bothers me that, um, you know, young gay people are committing suicide, being thrown out of their homes, transgenders living on the pier. I say that we're all spiritual beings having a human experience. They are precious and their lives are precious. You know? When do you feel the most vulnerable? When is your guard the most down, I guess? And you're most, yeah, like raw? Mm-mm. Never? Never. Do you feel vulnerable in romantic relationships now? No, like no, because I, see, the whole thing was I didn't know it in those days, but I was always polyamorous. I've never been a monogamous person. So I always said, hey, two's company, three's better. <laughs> you know, that's just, and that's the way I live. By the way, I call this my third leg. Oh. When do you feel the most beautiful? Um, yeah, I think it's a spirit. It's beautiful. Yes. Are there moments that you feel the most alive in your spirit? Like, can I yeah, when I'm awake. <laughs> <You know? laughs> every day above ground is a good day. <laughs> so every day above ground is a happy day. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> uh. what, what do you love the most about your body? All of it. <laughs> we were all nudists in our, in our home. Um, my mother, my grandmother, and me. My grandmother used to be a hairdresser, and she would always say, call before you come, <laughs> because nobody wears clothes in the house. <laughs> you know. What it did for me, it gave me a good sense of who I was and to feel good about this body that I was given. You know, I named my body parts. This breast is called Delicious. <laughs> this one is called Luscious. And um, my clitoris is named Cleo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's about as good as it gets, y'all. <laughs> it's perfect. You're beautiful. <laughs> What's your biggest fear? Fear? I don't have no fear. And that comes from being in the Black Pants Party. I always say my comic line was, hey, nobody gets out this world alive anyway. And so nobody goes before their time. So there's really, really nothing to fear. Last question. Why in your body, why in your skin, why in your journey, why is it a good place to be? And I love seeing the fact that all these different factors like Black Lives Matters and the gay movement and Me Too and all these are working together now. To me, this is a wonderful time to be alive. I mean, I'm having more fun now in my 80s than I did in my earlier years, you know? So, yeah. But people have to get to realize 
that they do what they can in the time that they're given, you know, and be all right with that. Mm -hmm. Because like <laughs> you're saying, oh, you can't save all the whales, no. but, you can, but if you save a pod, <laughs> then you've done something. You know? mm -hmm. oh. Exactly. This is so incredibly beautiful. I know everybody here is like in tears and really so grateful. We're like on our knees. Well, I'm glad to have done it. And I'm having fun. I hope y'all enjoy yourself because I'm having oh a ball. <laughs> we are so having a good time. I can't even begin to tell you. <laughs> Thank you to our partner Bonafide for standing with us in our pursuit to destigmatize menopause and defy ageism taboos. When I was going through menopause about 10 years ago, I felt very overwhelmed with having nowhere to turn in terms of understanding what was happening to me, how to deal with the symptoms. And I really wish that there was a company like Bonafide making organic and natural products that would have helped me in so many ways that I didn't have at that time. All Bonafide products are scientifically validated and recommended by over 8,000 doctors across the country. And they offer hormone-free relief from menopausal symptoms like hot flashes, night sweats, and vaginal dryness. Save up to $30 a month when you bundle two or more of your favorite Bonafide products together and opt for a bundle subscription. Bonafide wants you to find relief from menopausal symptoms so that you don't have to suffer through it like so many people have. If you're interested in a naturally derived but effective solution to menopause, try 20% off your first subscription with code STYLEAQ today. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of What's Underneath with Rev Goddess Kennedy. Subscribe to Style Like You. you to have more interviews like these. <laughs>